Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going over another shear force and bending moment problem. All right, now this one is uh, just a cantilevered beam with a fixed support and one point load and one distributed load. Now, um, before we jump into it, just um, know that there are two other videos explaining um, how to do these separately. So if you don't really understand it because we'll be moving a bit faster in this video, don't worry, just check those video out. And um, as always, if you have a comment, just leave it below. So without further ado, let's just start. All right. First thing to do in all these problems is just simply find the reactions, right? So at a fixed support, we have three reactions, right? We have CY, vertical force, CX, horizontal force, and moment about C, right? Um, assuming that counterclockwise is positive because that's just a convention. Okay, so basically um, what we need to solve now is just three things. Sum of forces in the y direction. Let's just do that first. And then that equals zero, right? So point load, four, and then that, that's negative because it's going down. Um, minus three times two, dis total distributed load, uh, that equals negative six. And then plus cy equals zero. So CY would then just equal 10 kilonewtons, right? That just equals 10 kilonewtons going up, right? And then we can just write some of forces in the X direction. And since there's no external horizontal forces acting on it, um, CX would just be equal to zero, all right? Next, sum of moments around C equals zero, all right? So what do we have that's causing a moment right now? Well, we have this four kilonewtons, the point load, right? And then at four meters away from point C, right? And it's causing the system to go counterclockwise, so it's positive, right? Same thing with the three, three kilonewton distributed load, right? We have three times two, this is the total load, and times one, because if we were to replace this distributed load with a point load, and then it would just be at half its um, its total total length, so it's just one meter, right? And then finally, um, we have plus or minus um, mc. We have plus mc because we assume this is going counterclockwise, but if we find it's negative, we can just change it, right? Now that equals zero, right? And then that's 16, and then that's six plus six equals negative MC, so MC would then just equal negative 22 kilonewtons per meter, all right? A times meter, not per meter, sorry. So, uh, since this is negative, right, all we, we, we know that instead of rotating the system this way, it's it's this way instead, right? Which makes sense, right? If these two, this four wants to pull the system like this, right? This three also wants to do this, right? Something has to keep it in place. And if it's going again this way, well, this thing is spinning off into space, right? So we don't want that. So we want something that's pushing it back this way. And how much? It's 22 kilonewtons um, per meter, not per meter, times meters, okay? So once we have found the reactions, the rest is quite simple, right? Remember that shear force diagrams, we're only accounting for forces, all right? So that's forces in the X and Y direction. And if you ever get stuck, again, just cut the beam and think about it like that, all right? But the shortcut is, whenever you see a force that's going down, we go down on the graph, all right? So negative four kilonewtons here, because we have four, I should probably uh, put this a bit more to scale, so negative four, right? And then since there is no external forces acting in this portion, so A to B, right? Anywhere you cut along the beam, you're still gonna get four kilonewtons to balance this, right? And then finally distributed load, right? 
it is a total of negative six. So we're subtracting another six from this system, right? So negative four minus six equals negative 10, right? Oh, that's not very to scale here. Let me, um, let me push this back again and we'll add probably here, right? Negative 10. So we know that because this distributed load in total subtracts six from six from negative four, right? Um, we go down even more and the total amount is until we hit negative 10 because you know, two times three is six, right? And since this is a distributed load, um, a uniformly distributed load, right? One of these rectangles, right? Um, it's going to be a steady rate of decrease. So we draw kind of this slope line like this, okay? So, and that's your, that's your shear force diagram, right? Again, again, you don't have to think about it this way, right? If it makes more sense to you to cut the beam, right? Let's say you cut it at, you know, 1.5 meters, right? And then, you know, you see this four, right? And you can also draw this, uh, remember the positive sign convention, right? Uh, moments like this, shears like this, and if you're cutting it like this, shear downwards is positive, so it's a negative shear because this is four kilonewtons going down, right? So you need a four kilonewtons going up to balance it. And since we defined it downwards as positive, this point is just negative four, right? You can cut this as at any point you like to, to kind of make more sense out of it, but uh, in essence, it's just a shortcut. When you see it going down, it's going down. When you see a distributed load, it's just a straight line portion, okay? So once we have that, it's actually very simple now. We just take the area under the curve, okay? So area under shear force diagram is how you're going to draw bending moment, right? So first point, right, is always gonna be zero, right? Because this is a free hanging end, there's nothing there, right? Um, if you were to start at here, at C, right, there would be a moment here applied. So wherever you have an applied moment, right, make sure to include that. But since there are no moments applied at point A, it's just going to be zero, right? So we have zero and we have four, so negative four, this is this value here, right, times uh, two, right, that's negative eight, okay? And since this, again, is a rectangle, rectangles are just straight slopes, okay? Negative eight, right? Okay, and then you might be wondering, well, how do I calculate, you know, this area? Well, one way to go about it, just cut it. Just to cut it like that, right? So it'd be a uh, negative four. This area would be negative four times two, same thing, right? And this area would be, um, let's say negative six. That's from here to here, right? times two times a half. So that equals negative six, this equals negative eight. And then we have a total of negative 14. And then that's going to be, so negative eight, we're starting here, negative eight minus negative 14, right? That's the two values we got here, right? And then that equals negative 22, right? So, and then since this, this is a triangle plus a square, it have a curve, it's not a straight line, right? But do we need to know any, every point on that line? No, we don't. <coughs> Bless me. <laughs> so basically what we need to do is we just draw a curve, right? And 
I guess a bit more clarification on whether to draw this kind of curve or to draw, for example, this kind of curve, right? Which one do you, do you draw, right? And the way to think about it is simple, right? If you have more area, right, there you get steeper. Either you get steeper this way or you get steeper this way, right? And since it's negative, you get steeper going down like this, right? And if the area is more, more, more small, right, there is less of area to, to go. So your slope would be a bit more mild. Okay, so that's how you figure out if something is like this or something is going like that. Of course, if you haven't seen any problems like that yet, don't worry about it yet. We'll probably cover it down the future, uh, down, yeah, down in the line. So again, don't worry about it. So now we know that this point is now negative 22, right? And the, the reason, I guess, why we draw this portion, right, is because, well, does that 22 sound familiar? Yeah, it's, it's this one, right? So everything has to be balanced in the end. And this is a good way to check if you see it, uh, did it right, right? So at the end, it all balances, okay? So it goes back to zero. And uh, the, yeah, that's, that's the uh, essence of this problem, right? Shear force, bedding moment diagram, some things will remember. Um, to draw the shear force diagram, we're only considering forces, right, up and down. And if you're ever unsure, just cut the beam, follow the sign convention, right? It's, um, it's, it's a bit more slow and steady, but don't do shortcuts until you understand them. Right? Okay. And then finally, to draw bending moment diagrams, take this area under the curve and just simply subtract the area until the next kind of milestone. Right? And uh, yeah, I think that's it for the recap. So once again, oh, and one more thing, I guess your professors might dock you off on marks if you know, you, you can indis indicate this as a straight line, straight line, right? And you can indicate this as a curved line, just so, you know, for clarity, but no one's gonna nitpick on you like that, and if they do, well, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the end of this video. So, um, again, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, or just, you know, want to drop by and say hi, well, yeah, yeah, do so in the comments. But until then, I'll see you in the next video, all right? Um, have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye.